Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new session of Beside This Process, Professor. Um, thank you so much for being connected today with us. Thank you so much for your attention and for being uh, today in this new session. My name is uh, Kevin Guerrero, and I'm going to be the uh, in charge of this session. So if this is the first time that you are in one of this session, let me talk about, let me explain you a little bit how the whole concept of the process professor works. So we have a design and we have created this program um, and this space to bring our community and us together in one space that is happening every second Thursday of the month. So it means every second Thursday, you are going to have one new session for process professor. We are having one session in English, one session in Spanish, and these sessions are completely free. So you can just register, connect, and be here completely for free. The idea is that we can talk during this hour about some topics, some trending topics that we have seen in the market, some information that we have seen that maybe is relevant for your organization or elements that we have identified that within companies, it is getting more attention. Maybe some trending topics uh, that has been identified by a really important analyst as Gardner, Forrester, or even ITC and that we want to share with you this information. In this version, right, we have also focused a lot in what citizen developers are. And we have as a main objective to provide and to simplify what citizen developers will need. And one of the main reasons that we have taken this decision to actually focus that much in citizen developers is because of the importance of citizen developers within companies. We have identified, and not only us, but actually all the main analysts in the market, that this is a topic that is growing and growing and actually having every single day more attention and more relevance within companies. So it means that we need to put this in our top priorities and we need to develop and understand them in a much better way so we can provide the tools that they need. Some of the information or some of the, the, the important data that we have used to actually give this relevance and this importance to the citizen developers are some studies that were conducted by Garner, right? Where we, or the word Garner, identified that, for example, by 2024, 75% of large enterprise will be using at least four low-code development tools for both IT applications development and citizen development initiatives, right? But at the same time, also, Garner identified that by 2024, 80% of all the technology products and services will be built by those who are not full-time technical professionals. So it means that our workforce, it's moving now to the corner of the citizen developers. And it makes sense because at the end, one of the problems that we have within companies is that we don't have enough IT personnel. It's not enough. We don't have enough hands for IT to take care of everything that is required in the organization. And it makes sense. We need to leave IT for elements or for uh, maybe developments that require really deep and technical knowledge, right? But we need to give power to other part of users. How can we empower citizen developers? So this is something that we have worked a lot in this version and it's because mainly we have understood that this is a revolution. Citizen developer is a revolution and it has to be part of your organization strategies. It must be on your radar and you need to take this into account when you are planning and when you are trying to define what is going to be your next two, three, five, ten years plan because citizen developer is a revolution that is not going to stop. And one of the first things that you as an organization should do is to start understanding, identifying, and have completely clear in your mind the full spectrum of citizen developers. Why? Because there was a mis misunderstood in the market a couple um, years ago that it was that anyone can be a citizen developer. And it's not like that, right? In order to be a citizen developer, it is required to have some minimum uh, requirements, some minimum knowledge. And it's not that even your nanny can be a citizen developer. No. So that's the first thing that we need to understand in detail. Not absolutely everyone can be a citizen developer. And the second one 
is that we need to understand that there is not just one single type of citizen developer. We have a full spectrum and we need to understand them individually in order to provide the tools that are good for them, that are required for them. And in that way, we can even go faster in the growth of citizen developer initiatives within an organization. So which type of citizen developers do we have? We have identified four. The first ones are the ones that we call basic plain citizen developers. Who are they? These are the typical users that work on a daily basis in some specific applications, right? So someone within your organization that is working directly with the invoice, right? The, and in the organization, you have an invoice system or someone that is working in the HR system. They have what? A lot of knowledge from the business point of view of what they do. They know how the process works, which are the forms that we need to complete, which documents must be generated, when do I need a sign from someone, right? They have all the knowledge about how the process works, but maybe they don't have all the technical skills that we want. They are not developers. They don't have any idea maybe how to create a new app. They don't have any idea how to do a line of code, but we can use all the knowledge that they have from the business point of view, providing them no code options. If we provide to them known cone options and we combine that with all the knowledge that they have from the business point of view, they are going to be a perfect match for us in order to create and to, let's say, automate or simplify processes that probably will be, we will be using within work groups, within maybe some full departments, right? And we have, probably we will not have too much dependence on IT. So that's the first type of citizen developers that we have here. The second one are the ones that we call power users. This is the next level of citizen developer, and it is. Are the users that has, again, as citizen developers, a lot of knowledge about the business. They know what they are doing. They know how the process work. They know the people that are involved, right? But additionally of that, they have technical knowledge, basic, not professional developers, but they know how the system works. They are the people that can actually go directly and extract data for multiple systems and create dashboards. Or these are the people that for some reason, if at some point they need to extract data from one system, they can even run basic database queries, or they can create macros, right? So there are a lot of things that these people have, a lot of technical knowledge plus, right? a lot of, a lot of, a lot of business knowledge. So if we want them to be part of our team, if we want them to be part of these uh, citizen developer initiatives, what we need to provide to them is what? Is tools with no code. It doesn't have to be no code at all. No, these people know what they are doing. They have knowledge. So if we provide to them some basic low code options, they will be able to do and to automate processes for sure. Right now we got into the next one that these are our developers. This is our IT team, people that has absolutely all the knowledge and for them, we need to provide everything that they need. Why? They know what they are doing. These are our developers, professional IT people, right? So we can be sure that if they have access to all the power of the platform, they will be able to create and to automate all the large departmental apps or applications or enterprise applications that we want. And finally, we have the citizen specialists that are the ones that has really, really a specific knowledge on something. Someone that is an expert for creating reports and that one. Someone that is an expert that can create macros in Excel, right? Someone that is an expert that can just go and create multiple, multiple records in a spreadsheet and then convert all of that into amazing reports. Those are the citizen developer specialists. So what we have done is that let's understand first of all, which are your citizen developers. Well, once that you identify which are the citizen developers, then let's do a revolution with them. And we call this a revolution because it's something that it has not stopped in the last, in the last couple of years. This is start as a concept. At the beginning, the market was like, hmm, I don't know, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe they can work, maybe not. But with the time, besides from actually stopping or besides of 
not getting enough attention, what the citizen developer has shown in the market is that every single day it's growing and growing and growing. So it's a revolution. And that's why we need to be intuitive for everyone is that we have focused a lot of, of our efforts in every single of these citizen developers. Citizen developer, basic plain uh, user, power user, and developers. In the last session, the one that I did on the month of May, I was talking about one of the features that, that allow power users and developers to work together. That that's the concept that is called as fusion teams. If you hadn't had the chance to take a look to that one, you can just go to the process professor page and you can take a look to the video there. In this version, we have also, and in this session, I want to talk to you what we have done now fully for the citizen developers. It means the basic line, the first group of users, the normal users, the business users, the ones that work on a daily basis on applications but doesn't have or that they don't have too much technical knowledge and what we have done for them. So for them, we have had in Visari for a good time one feature that it is called live processes. What is the concept behind of a live process? We want to provide a tool for these kind of citizen developers, right? That allow them to automate processes with no code at all, right? So it means they don't need to put a single line of code, right? The idea is that they can automate simple workloads or simple processes with no code, no deployments, no developers involved, and all this development can happen and can be done directly from a web browser. So it means they don't even need to install something on their laptops, right? The idea of live processes is that we can provide to the users the option to have governance for transparency, accountability, out of table, and compliance. So everything is so easy. The way on how live processes work is that we need to follow some basic steps. From a web browser, the end user must go and create a process diagram, then define with simple drag and drop options and features the way on how the forms are going to look like. Then with no code at all, they will be able to create business rules. They will be able to define the participants and at the end, they will be able to execute those processes. So what have we done now in this Visage Spring 2022? Like processes were great, right? And we have actually had a lot of customer success stories with the use of live processes. Companies from the world automating hundreds and in some cases even thousands of live processes with this feature. Why? Because it was easy. Because it was just going into the web browser, put some diagrams, simple diagrams, and then automate it. And there you go. And it was taking out of the radar the need of IT. Sometimes some organization, even some departments were having a lot of issues with simple situations that was not a priority for IT. A priority for IT was something that probably they will do it in one year, six months, and that was too long for them. So live processes were great in the way on how they were from the beginning. However, as this is a feature that is focused and is centered 100% on cities and developers with no code, of course, we had some limitations. At the beginning, we were not expecting and we didn't want anyone to actually, for example, execute or complete integrations in a live process. If it is a citizen developer, probably they don't know how integrations works, right? But that was putting, of course, some limitations. I'm really happy for you, for to you um, to present this feature and it is the option on how we can share a full process, develop, automate it and ready in BSAG Studio to your live process. This is going to let us take live processes even to the next level. Before, they were great, but they had some limitations. With this, we're taking out a lot of limitations that were in place for live processes, and now we're able to actually get even further with this feature. So how this is going to work? What is the idea behind of this concept? So the idea is that now a developer using the full power, everything that we have to find and everything that we want for our 
um, process, right? So the idea is that now the developer can go use the full platform, create an automated process, define whatever they want in that process. They can include now widgets, they can include RPA, they can include connectors, invoke web services. They can just go and integrate with an ECM system. Whatever they need, they can create and they can use all the power of Visage Studio in that process. And then what the developer is going to do is to just share that process to be available and to be used directly in the live process. So now what the citizen developer is going to be able to do is to take that process that is fully automated, that is fully created, and use it to actually take your pro live processes to the next level. So what is going to be the, ha the full idea here? We want to keep live processes with the premise that we don't want to have this as no code at all. So the way in how this is going to work is that the citizen developer will go to the live processes feature, We'll start creating the process. And what we have done is that we have add now a new type of task that is a share process task. It means that the citizen developer can, with a simple click, change the type of task that they are going to use for a share process task. And one that they have that share process task, they will be able to connect this with the process that has been developed in Visage Studio. But we don't want the citizen developer to actually get into all the technical details about this one. So what we want is that they believe or they think this share process as a black box. We don't need and we don't want, we're not interested that they know all the details, that they know what, what is happening behind of that process. For them, this is just a black box. The only thing that they have to be worried about is in that black box, what information I am have to send and what information I will receive. So I have a live process and I want to use a process that was built and created in Visage Studio. That's my black box. But in order for the black box to do the magic, I need to send some data and I am going to show that I'm going to receive some output data. That's it. So the citizen developer, the only thing that the citizen developer will have to do is to go directly and define the inputs and the outputs. And that's it. And then the process will do all the work. That process that is being developed in Visage Studio can have absolutely everything that they want. So we are expanding the capabilities of live processes in a much higher way. So in order to use this new feature, we need to do, let's say, two main steps. The first one is the one that has to be done by the developer. If I am the developer, and as a developer, I want to share this live process with a live, with, with a, sorry, this process with a live process, then what I have to do, basically this, you have to, the developer will have to go create that process as a reusable, that is a condition, it is mandatory that the process that is going to be shared must be a reusable. So it's a reusable process, I create that one, I create the diagram, the data model, forms, business rules, whatever you want into that. Then I am going to share that process to live processes. And in that step, what I'm going to do is to define the inputs and the outputs, right? I will create labels for those inputs and outputs. And then I have to map those labels with my real data model, right? So an example, if I have a process where I am going to check or where I, am, where, I, where I will need some approvals, right? And I need to send the information of the case or the information of the loan that has been requested. I need to be completely sure that if I have total amount requested as a label, that total amount requested is mapped with an attribute that I have in the data model that is the total amount request, okay? And this is what the developer will do. So he is going to be in charge of creating the process in Visage Studio, automating whatever he wants, complex business rules, widgets, connectors, RPA, bots, whatever it's needed, they can do it. Then share that process, defining inputs and outputs, and finally mapping the information. Once this is done, the next, next part is going to be what the citizen developer will do. So it's now me as a citizen developer creating 
a new live process. And what I want to do is now use that process that has been shared with me through this new feature. What I will have to do is first create my live process, my diagram, nothing changed there, but I need to define one new type of task that is the share process task. That share process task is going to be the one that will allow me to connect with that process that has been developed in Beside Your Studio. I need to define to that process task the inputs and the outputs. And take into account that when I am in a process, in a live process, I don't have a full data model. What I have are some attributes that has been created for the live process, but I need still to map all the information over there. And then that's it. Now, a citizen developer can take that live process to a different level because now we are over a big door. We can now add integrations, add widgets, add bots, whatever we want, it's going to be available now for the citizen developer. So let me take you really quickly now to how this is going to look like directly in our tool. Let me show you the two ways on how this is going to look like. First, I'm going to show you directly from the developer point of view, how the developer is going to see all this information, how the developer is, is going to be the one that realize or, or check exactly um, the information that they have, how they can share that process, and then how from the um, citizen developer, from the user that wants to use, he can just take a look to that. So the first thing is that now I am in my Visage Studio, taking into account that now I am working in what it's called Studio Cloud Services. It means everything that I have here, it's on the cloud. Take a look that I have here, even a trial. This is my information. This is a user that has been defined as a full developer, meaning that I have access to the wizard view, the expert view, and even the experience view. Why? Because if not, I can, if for example, this is one or other, another feature that was uh, presented last month, I can define users now as power users and they don't have access to everything, right? Again, we are understanding individually every single citizen developer and we're providing to them the tools that best fits their needs. So now here, what I'm going to have is I have all the capabilities of Visage Studio and I have now a new process here that is this one, calculate the risk. As a developer, I have all the power to change or to modify this process. What I can add here, whatever I want. I can include multiple activities, multiple type of tasks. Take a look at this one that is called a service task. Now it's added because we are thinking that we want to do an integration, right? But at the same time, I have now the capability to move through all the steps. I can change the data model. I can define my screens. And something amazing about this is that as now I am working fully in Visage Studio, I don't have any restriction at all on how this is going to look like. Meaning that even here, I am able to go directly and for example, include widgets, right? So I have a new widget here in this task. This is a process that is being developed in a studio. So far, so good, right? Additional of this, as it is a process developed in a studio, I can go to the business rules and I can even see that in the first activity, take a look that even I have an integration with a connector. In this specific example, I have a Excel connector that if I open and review what's happening there, right? At the end, what, what I have here, it is, it is one spreadsheet that is being developed by the organization. And in that spreadsheet, basically what they have, it is one document that allow our um, company to identify based on this information, which is the risk that, the, that a customer can have, right? So based on the age, based on the city, income expense, gender, and total amount requested, the simulator is going to let me know or is going to show me which is going to be basically the risk for that customer. And now what I am doing is that basically I am adding and I am using that connector directly into my process. So I do the mappings, I do the inputs and outputs, and my, my connector is ready to use. So now, if I am the developer and as a developer, I have finished, I have complete all this development and all this automation of the process. And I want now to share this process with live process, what I have to do. 
So I have to do to the expert view. And within the expert view, I have to look for the process that I want to share. In this example, take a look, that is the calculate risk process. And when I select the calculate risk process, I am going to find on the top, on the ribbon, now one option that is going to be the share to live processes. And here is where I, am, I have to do the first steps to set up this live process. Which are the steps that I have to set up? First, let's complete the configuration of the process. So let's put it a name, let's put a description, right? Now define input and output for this black box. Take into account that here we are just putting labels. This is not necessary or it's not exactly something in the data model. It is just labels. And I can identify one, one label if it is going to be mandatory or if it is optional. So take a look, all the ones that are required, all of them has this asterisk next to it. And when I create new inputs, I can put any name or any num num element that I want. So I can say country, for example. I have here all the different data types that I have that basically are what? All the basic ones, Boolean, currency, dates, uh, numbers in different options, but also I can even map this information with entities. So I can say country is going to be an entity for me, is going to be related with the parameter entity called country, right? And I am going to say if it is required or not. That's simple. When I click on save, take a look that now the country is going to look here or it's going to appear here, and now I have that new label. But these are labels. If we want the process to work with all the capabilities that we want, it is required for us to say these labels with which elements from the data model are connected. So here, in the last step, I have to do the map. So every single label that I have created, I need to map it directly with something in my data model. And take a look that here, you are going to be able to just navigate the data model with this option. So the country is going to be associated with this client financial estate. I don't know, let's see if it is in client. Then let's see if maybe it's in city. No, city is not going to be okay because city, I already have it here, right? And I can just navigate all the data model and set up the information that I want. If I am not sure if this is going to be okay, I can come back, I can delete it, and it's not going to be any problem to just modify this. Once that this is done, once that I click here on finish, what it is going to happen is that now my process from beside your studio is exposed to the live process and now the citizen developer can use it. So this is the first step that is in charge or the one that has to do all of this is the developer, right? Now, what happened if I am actually now the citizen developer? So how can I use as a citizen developer this option? So I'm going to run here my work portal, right? And I am going to just enter directly into the live processes option. And I want to show you exactly, exactly how this is going to look like. So take into account that what, what I will have to do in this moment is to look for that process that has been shared and complete the configuration there. So I am in, in my work portal. I go to the live processes option. I go to manage live processes. And I already have one process here created, so you can take a look how it's going to look like. So I enter into the live process. I want to edit the diagram. And now the first thing that I want that you realize is that in this moment, I have what? I have this task called calculate risk that if you see on the upper right, on the upper left corner, it has like a little diagram. That means that now we have a new type of task. That is this one, shared process task. Once the citizen developer has defined one task as a shared processes task, the configuration of the task will allow them to do this. It's going to see all the processes that are available and that has been shared directly from the uh, processes, right, from the studio. So here we're going to find which are the processes that are available there. And I can select which is the one that I want to use and then complete the other two steps. The second one, it let define the input, which are going to be the inputs that I am going to have here. So here again, it is, I need to do the mapping from the studio attribute 
with the live processes attributes. Take into account that when we are working with live processes, we don't have a full data model. Instead of that, what I have is that I, am, I, I do drag and drop of the different objects or the different elements that I got over that point, and I can just use that point or that element to store the data. So I need to do the mapping. So this element that I create in a studio as the label for the input, call it H, is going to be mapped with what? And I have to do all the mappings. Then I have to do the same for output, and then that's it. Now I have one element within my live process that is going to communicate with a full process of Visage Studio. Take into account that here I haven't done any technical configuration. It's still the, pre the, 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 the premise of no code. I want citizen developers to continue doing whatever they want, but with no code. And now the way on how I can test it is I am going to go back. I am going to just go directly here and say that I want to put this live process as pilot so I can test how this is going to look like. And now I am going to create a new case of that live process. This case is called client express assessment. I go directly and create a new case. And once that I hear, take a look that if even if I review the details of where I am and how my live processes is look looking for, take a look, take a look that here I am in the first activity of the live process, that is register client candidate. If I open here, take a look, is this one register client candidate? I am there. Now, if I complete all the data, so let's suppose that here I am going to have a customer called John Smith that is in Barcelona, that is a businessman, that is 28, is a male, has 10,000 of income, so let's say 5,000 of expenses and is requesting a loan for 4,000, 40,000. Then at the moment that I click on next, what it is going to happen with this live process is that this live process will go directly to the process that has been developed in the studio. Take a look that here you have client express assessment. This is the name of the live process activity register client candidate. That's the first activity. If I click on next, take a look how this is going to change now. So first, it's going to tell me that now I am in the calculate risk process and I am now in the analyze result activity. What's the meaning of that? That I have now entered the sub process. Take a look. I am not anymore in the main process or in the pattern process. I am now in the sub process, specifically in the analyze result activity. And specifically, I already have complete this service task, that is the one where I am doing the integration with the Excel connector. So if I go back, take a look that in this analyze results, I am able to see all the information that I put in the first activity. But at the same time, take a look that now we are even looking and seeing a full widget that this was not available before for live processes. And also take a look that now it is even telling me that this process is connected with a pattern process, right? Because here, what is going to happen is that it's going to take the live process as the pattern process and the, then the sub process. And at the end, even if I click on next, take a look what is going to happen. I click on next. I am going to go back to the main process that is client express assessment. Now I am in the last activity called it close assessment and take a look what it has happened here. Now the connector has done their job is taking, it has take all the information that I sent to the connector, right? The age, the gender, the income, the expenses, and is going to, uh, it has complete the processing of the information in the spreadsheet. And from the spreadsheet, now I have the return of the risk. And it's telling me now that actually this is a customer that has a low risk. So maybe I can proceed directly to complete the loan. So this is going to be the way on how now we can even expand all those capabilities, all those options from a live processes. Why? Because now we have the power or full processes directly in this feature. Okay. So with this one, I am finishing the demo. So let me just go back to the um, presentation, right? And basically now what I would like to do is to invite all of you to the next session 
of the process professor and then we will just go back and review any possible questions that maybe you can have about this point right